Good morning guys. I was not planning on vlogging today, but for some reason, maybe it's a procrastination, you know, effort. <laughs> but uh, I was sitting down to work today and I just thought, you know what, I have some things to chat about. And I haven't just had like a regular old vlog in a few weeks, so I thought maybe we could do a little catch up. I kind of let my author on the road shorts fall behind a little bit this week. Um, I will be still keeping up with those. I probably won't have any this week. I've been taking a lot of footage and I'll just go ahead and insert that here. It's not for lack of being in beautiful places. We've been just kind of driving north up the coast of California, making our way very slowly. I think the last time I updated you guys, it was Coronado when we went to Laguna Beach. We went to Ventura. We went to Santa Barbara. Rosa has had plenty of beach time, um, and so have I. <laughs> it's been wonderful, and also some just really, really beautiful hikes. We went on one um, a couple days ago where we visited a monarch butterfly, I forget the word, habitat, I think it is, and that was just really gorgeous. We went on a hike yesterday and just kind of like crested up a hill and came across all these hang gliders getting prepped to jump <laughs> and that was also really cool uh just yeah it's it's been great i just uh i think i kind of talked about this in previous videos but i i really am constantly looking for a balance with youtube where i'm sharing a lot everything is mostly focused on writing and i'm not it's not making me like experience my life through the lens of how can I turn this all into content. Sometimes I just want to like not think about that at all and just kind of be there and be kind of selfish and keep it for myself. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we've been doing. Um, and we're currently, you know what? I don't know where we are. I think we're in, I think it's called Lombok, Lombok, California. And, uh, yeah, that, that's all been going great. I have definitely been in a better work groove lately and I wanted to catch you guys up on how my projects are going. So first of all, I actually do have a tiny bit of potentially hopeful submission news. I heard from my agent uh, yesterday that one of the editors on my list has read the middle grade mystery and is getting second reads with the team and is hoping to have some news for me in a couple of weeks. I am still, I won't lie, like at this point, even though I preach <laughs> being patient with submission and it takes a long time and I know there are plenty of people who are on sub for months and months and months and then they do get a deal. Even though I say all that and even though I know all that to be true, part of me had just kind of like put that project to bed in the back of my head like, okay, this isn't going to happen. Um, and I still, I would not be surprised at all if they came back and just said, we really enjoyed this, but we're going to have to pass for X reasons. Camera's having a little issue. Honestly, at this point, it was just refreshing to have heard anything that wasn't a pass or far, far worse. No news at all. This, this trend of editors just simply not responding ever to submissions is just just so baffling to me like just send the rejection just send the rejection that's all like just put us out of our misery <laughs> so yeah it was great to hear something and uh we'll see how that goes i will obviously keep you guys updated and i think my agent is setting kind of a closing date with the other editors like we'd like to hear back by this date so that's also good because i'm gonna consider no response a no after that date and and just kind of move on um anyway so we'll see what happens a little bit of potential hopefulness i had a really interesting chat with a friend the other day i'm gonna have to be a little vague about this but basically we have been chatting with and hearing from authors in private and some of this is secondhand it's not all firsthand i'll say that right off the bat about how things are looking on submission right now. And the bottom line is there are a lot of authors out there, middle grade authors, I'm speaking specifically to middle grade here, who I would call front list. I mean, authors who are, whose sales are good to great, <laughs> who hit bestsellers lists and who have won awards, like really, 
prestigious awards, authors who, when you go to their publisher, their imprint's website, their covers are going to be splashed right up front. We published this book, front list, okay, um, who are getting passes and flailing on submission right now. They've, some of them, utterly, like, their next projects have been completely turned down by their own publisher and by others. Others are languishing, not hearing, etc. And it made me feel oh, a lot of conflicting emotions. Like, part of me, obviously, was just like, it, it almost does make you feel hopeless because it's like, well, if they, if someone like that can't sell their next book, what chance do I have? Um, but then part of it made me feel a little bit validated. Truly, I don't think, if this book of mine doesn't sell, I don't think it really speaks to the quality of the book, and I don't think it speaks to even me as an author, and I'm not even talking just about the quality of my books and what I think of them, but also my sales, because frankly, while I do still consider myself a midlist author, my most recent books have done really well. Like, I, I don't know when the last time I updated you guys on on this was, but My Outer Half, which I know I shared with you guys when I got my first statement about that book, it's been out for a little over a year now, and thanks to largely clubs and fairs, these are not trade sales, but clubs and fair sales, but thanks to that, it is over the 300,000 copy mark now, which is insane to me. I, I mean, that's like so much more than all of my other published books combined have sold. That's a wild number, and that is in my submission. Like, my numbers, my sales numbers for my last few books are in there. And that's, th I would have thought in the past that that would have been enough to get me, if I wrote a quality book, get me a deal. They're not going to pass on me because my sales aren't high enough. That was always the reason in the past. But you know what? That hasn't been the case. And uh, it again, it's like, it's both validating and also like demoralizing. <laughs> Because you really want to say, what else can I do? But also, truly, it has made me realize it's not me. It's the industry. It's the moment we're in. And I think that's kind of where I went to in my brain with the next part of this. It's There's always kind of an ebb and flow to this in the industry. Like, I don't even want to say the word trends, but you know, all genres of books, all age levels of books, they'll go through. We're acquiring a lot. We're not require acquiring so much. And it, it just kind of does this over and over again. And right now we're just in this moment where very few things, relatively speaking, are being acquired. But hopefully that's going to, you know, we're going to get back into the expansive. We're acquiring more. We're looking for this. Um, I don't know, or maybe I'm just being too optimistic. <laughs> but uh, that's that's where all of that is right now, and those are my thoughts on submission. If you're on submission right now, again, I really, I hope that you don't let that upset you. I hope you let it, you know, remind you that every time you get a pass or every day that goes by that you don't hear anything, it really isn't you. Everybody's going through it, including what I think we would all consider very, very, very successful authors. It's just not, it's not happening for a lot of us right now. Um, so that's my update on submissions. Now let's go on to other things. I have been trying vigilantly <laughs> to stick to my rule of every day for 30 minutes, at least I work on one of my books and I alternate between the thriller and the fantasy. And there are days where I don't do it. I'm not going to lie. I haven't been consistent with doing it every day. And every day that I don't work on it, at the end of the day, I, I feel very disappointed in myself. Because on the days where I do work on them, I, they're, it's like the best 30 minutes. And it often goes past 30 minutes. I have been in the world building and I'm, in, I'm into the antagonist brainstorming part of the uh, middle grade fantasy. And I, I have revelations. I mean, things really click in those 30 minutes and it's like, oh, I could see the momentum here. And with the thriller, I'm writing the draft and I, it, it really, it feels so easy. I love that. I think I talked about this a while ago, but I decided very deliberately to make this thriller a first person point of view 
only one p point of view because that last mystery novel I wrote had like many um, and just keep it simple and like all it is is she's in trouble in the first chapter and things get worse with every chapter and I'm just driving her down as far as I can go and seeing how she gets out of these situations and it's fun it's just a fun easy drafting experience so far and yet every time I know it's time for me to do that work and set the timer for 30 minutes my brain tries to negotiate like well you could do it later or well you could do work on them both tomorrow 30 minutes on each and make up for it you know and if I sometimes I manage to just skip the negotiation I'm like no brain we're not doing this hit the timer open the document go whether you like it or not and those sessions always turn out great and then sometimes the negotiation wins and I end up reading or watching a video or doing something else instead and then I'm disappointed in myself <laughs> so I'm really trying to keep like I'm gonna work on it today it's gonna happen and um, when I work on them I'm loving them both of them I they're just absolutely fantastic and the final update I have for you guys is actually very interesting so first of all my last video was on Authors Equity that new hybrid publishing house founded by a couple of very like the former McMillan and PRH CEOs right and I want to say I tried really hard to keep up with the comments on that one and I ultimately did not if I haven't replied to your comment please know I've still read I think I'm caught up I might have a few that I haven't read yet there's a lot of differing opinions on that some of you guys think it's a really great thing some of you think it is not at all a good thing for authors and uh, I'm still in the camp of I don't know if the actual entity itself is going to be a good thing but I do know that it's a good thing that it's generating this discussion and that something so big in the industry of traditional publishing has happened to get this conversation going um, and people just at least acknowledging that the current model is failing it's failing authors and that means it's failing readers as well I think that's a good thing I mean not that it's failing but that it's it's getting us to talk about it and that it, people are at least trying to take a different approach so um, I told you guys in that video that I signed up on the authors equity website to ask for more information and I did actually get a general response this was sent out uh, to everybody it says as a very small team we can't respond to everyone individually but I wanted to provide some context and address some common questions regarding submissions at this stage we require authors to have agency representation while we've seen some interesting concepts come through our goal is to offer authors a focused hands-on approach this means remaining boutique in scale and being selective about the projects we take on this is not surprising at all to me I did wonder about the representation because I think one of their interviews mentioned agent submissions and I just think in that way they do I would say almost still have to be like a traditional publishing house in that regard because otherwise they would absolutely never get through all of the submissions they would get if they could take unagented submissions so I don't think that's surprising at all they have a form now on their website if you are an editor publicist designer or any kind of worker in that realm and you want to join the freelance network they have a form on the website that you can fill out to be considered and then here was the cool part I thought finally given the degree of interest in our model and our commitment to transparency we'll be publishing a newsletter to keep the book community in the loop on what we're working on and what we're learning you can sign up on our website so I had already signed up for the newsletter and you can do so too I will leave the link down below so like I said I in my last video I I would love it if they were transparent I don't know I mean the newsletter the cynic in me thinks well it's just gonna be full of the same hot air that publishers always put out to the public and then behind the scenes they're not actually acting on what they say like they're not acting in accordance to what they say their values are based on what they pay people and how they treat people <laughs> um, but this is something and I'm glad that the I'm sure they received a ton of you know requests for more information and I'm glad that the there were enough people including myself who specifically mentioned the transparency that it got their attention and they're at least thinking about that and they're going to offer us an insight to an extent at least as to how this model is gonna work I'm just I'm I'm still on team cautiously optimistic because I feel like I have to 
I have to personally stay optimistic about this kind of thing because I like my career and I don't want another career <laughs> and I want to believe that it's possible for me to continue publishing books over the coming decades. So yeah, but if you feel less than optimistic about this, believe me, I heard you and I understand the concerns. And I think I'm going to say this, my, my first kind of what, what's going to like probably start to sway me in one direction or the other is I, I know some people who are going to be attempting to freelance for them and I will be very interested to know what they offer as pay and how ultimately long-term it works. Like say a copy editor joins the team. First of all, do they actually pay a fair rate? Because like I said in my last video, most traditional publishing houses just do not. They underpay, period. Um, so if they pay a fair rate, we're off to a good start. And then I know they have this like idea of it's going to be a bespoke thing. Every author and every book is going to get like kind of a curated team special to that book. And I think that's wonderful. But how does that work in terms of, for these freelancers as far as like how steady will the work be for them with author's equity? I'm not saying, I, I, I understand these are not staff jobs and it's not going to be like a full time thing, but I also feel like most houses have a, a pretty tight group of freelancers they use because you want people to be familiar with things like your style guides and just your process in general. It helps things run a lot more efficiently, which is good for everybody, including authors all around. And um, yeah, so I just, I kind of want to hear from the staff workers and see how they're feeling about things. And then of course, I, I very much hope that, uh, I know that, who was it? James Clear was one of the big author investors and he said he would be published by them in the future. I'm really hoping that a nobody author is on their list and, and is allowed to like share publicly, maybe do some interviews about their experience. Cause I'm way more interested in how somebody who's starting from at ground level with their first book is treated and how their experiences with them than somebody like James Clear, whose next book is guaranteed to sell millions of copies, no matter who publishes it, frankly. So yeah, that's, that's where all that is. Uh, anyway, so I think that's going to be it for this video. I know this was just a quick little catch up, but Hey, better than nothing, right? Let me know how all your projects are going down below and I will see you hopefully next week with another video.